and open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. This is the time in our service where we take the Lord's Supper together. It's a time when we can remember Jesus, our Savior, and his death on the cross to save sinners. And to do this, to help us remember this, I'd like to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The main point in this verse is, blessed be God. And it gives a reason for this blessing. God is the one who caused us to be born again. Do you remember this? Do you remember at the time of salvation, God caused you to be born again? What does this say about what we were like previous to salvation? Mankind's fallen condition is not something that you can just stick a Band-Aid on. It's not something that you can fix with good deeds. We were dead in our transgressions and we needed to be made alive. We were in the domain of darkness and we needed to be transferred to the kingdom of light. We were blind and we needed to see which one of us could accomplish these things on our own. Which one of us could open our own eyes, raise us up from the dead. Which one of us could give ourselves new birth. God alone can bring the dead to life. God alone can open the eyes of the blind. And God alone can give new birth. Praise God that he caused you to be born again, believer. The rest of of verse 3 then describes three details of this new birth. First, it's according to his great mercy. Why did God cause the new birth in your life, believer? Why did he do it? When he looked down at your fallen state, did he see some good in you? And according to that good, give you a new birth? No, there is is none who is good. There is none who is righteous. God gave you, believer, the, the new birth according to his mercy. And his mercy is great. You see it when he takes a fallen, sinful, dead, rebellious person like you and I once were, and he gives us life. Believer, praise God for his great mercy in your life. Second, this new birth was to a living hope. Do you remember how before God displayed his mercy in your life that you had no hope? What lay before you was a future of just death, dread, fear, But this new birth is to a living hope. It's not just a new life, a radical change from our former deadness to this life, but the entire course of our lives is changed. The entire direction of our lives is totally different. Instead of heading to eternal destruction, we are now heading to eternal life. We are saved. Believer, do you remember this hope that you have? Praise God for this living hope that we have through the new birth. And the last deep detail of this new birth indicates how this was all accomplished. The last part of the verse reads that all this was through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Believer, do you remember that this, this new birth that God did in your life this new birth that was, came with a living hope that it cost something. God the Son became flesh. He lived a sinless life as a man, fully God, fully man. And after 30 or more years, he was nailed to a cross by sinful men. On that cross, he took the wrath that I deserve He took the wrath that you deserve. He took the wrath of everyone 
who would ever believe in him. And then he died. And after three days in the grave, he was raised again. And it was through this death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that God saved sinners. Your new birth, your living hope was all through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to God's great mercy. Now, if you're here and, and, and by your own admission, you would say that you've never believed in Jesus Christ. You would not say that you are born again. First of all, we're glad that you're here this morning. Um, and I do want you to know that this time of communion is a time for believers to remember their Savior. So just b- let the bread and juice pass you by. But I, but I also want you to know that you could take communion with us this morning. If you turn from your sins and believe and trust in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection to save sinners, your lust, your pride, your anger, your selfishness, these sins you are enslaved to and dead in, and you cannot escape by doing something good, you must be born again. And this, is, this new birth is only through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believer, take this time to remember your Savior. Remember Jesus Christ. As you take the bread and you take the juice, remember his body crushed by the wrath of God, the wrath which you deserved. And remember his blood which was poured out for you so that you could be born again to a living hope according to God's great mercy. Please examine your hearts as you sit here this morning. If there is any unrepentant sin, take this time to repent from it. A believer is one who repents from their sin. Repent and take the bread and juice with us. But but if you are unwilling, please then let the bread and juice pass you by, by, but but don't leave here without talking with someone. And, and, And don't leave here thinking that this is okay, that it's a good place to be. A believer is one who has been born again into a life where you see your sin. You turn from your sin because you're no longer a slave to your sin. So as the men come forward, remember Jesus Christ and his work on the cross to save us from our sins. Please take the bread and juice on your own. I'll come back up in a few minutes and pray.